That takes care of question nine. Now we go to question 10. Question 10 is usually measurement, geometry, and trigonometry. So here's where you get your circle theory and all of those stuff. It says on the diagram below, not drawn to scale, RQ is nine meters, RS is 12 meters, ST is 13 meters, and angle QRS is 60 degrees, angle SQT is 40. And it says, calculate correct one decimal place, the length of QS. So we need to find the length of QS. Now, as you can see, we have two sides and an angle between them. So it's best to use cosine rule to find QS. That's the best formula to, 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 to find QS. All right. And so using cosine rule, QS is equal to nine square, it's gonna be equal to nine square, nine square plus 12 square minus two times nine times 12 times the cosine of 60 degrees. That is what we have. And this is QX square, and so I can just put a square root sign around it to tell you that QX is the square root of all of this, by the way. All right. So when you work out all of that, that will give us the length of QX. So from what I'm getting is that QX is equal to the square root of whatever that thing will work out to be. So let's work it out. Nine square plus 12 square minus two times nine times 12 times the cosine of 60. So that's the square root of 170. And so QS is equal to Square root 117, that's 10.8. The QS is 10.8. 10.8 meters. Nice and easy. Nice. Now, number two, we want the measure of angle QTS. Measure of angle QTS. Now to find the measure of angle QTS, we're gonna have to use sine rule, because we know this side, we don't know this angle, we know this side, I know this angle. Remember sine rule tell us that this side will correspond to this angle. So QS corresponds to this angle and 40 degrees corresponds to 30. So what does that mean? That is telling us then that the sine of 40 divided by 13 is going to be equal to the sine of QTS over 10.8. And so this is what we're going to use to find on the QTS, the transposing we're gonna get that this angle QTS is sine inverse of, this is gonna be 10.8 sine 30 over 13. So that's when I transpose for sine for angle QTS. So it's 10.8 sine 40 over 13. And this will give me angle QTS. So just go ahead and put that in the calculator. All right, so 10.8 sine 40, 
sine 40, divide that by 13, and then take sine inverse of that answer, and I'm getting 32.3 degrees. So I get 32.3 degrees. And so that's angle QTS. Now, next thing it wants is the area of triangle QRS. Area of triangle QRS. Area of triangle is a half AB sine theta. That's the area of a triangle. So there's no real issue to that question. You just need to say, well, area of triangle we know that this formula is a half AB sine theta. I know what is A? A is nine. What is B? B is 12. What is theta? 60 degrees. So it's a half of nine times 12 times the sine of 60 degrees. That is going to give us that is going to give us the area of the triangle. Nice and easy. Soft. So let's look at it. So the area of the triangle is going to be 0 0.5 times 9 times 12 times the sine of 60, which is 46.8. The area of the triangle is 46.8. It's in centimeters. I think it's centimeters square. Remember the question said one decimal place for everything. Let me take off the centimeters, 468 meters square. It said one decimal place. Notice I'm keeping everything to one decimal place. Just to follow instructions. Now part B of the question or part four, it says the perpendicular distance Q from RS. So you pretty much want this perp the perpendicular distance Q from RS, perpendicular mean 90, making an angle of 90. All right, so this is what they want. They pretty much want the height of the triangle. All right, the perpendicular distance Q from RS. So this is what they want. This is what they mean by perpendicular distance. Now it's easy to find the perpendicular distance because once you know the area is 46.8, you know that area of a triangle is a half base times height, right? The area of a triangle is a half base times height. So in reality, what that means is a half of the base, let me say 0 0.5, 0 0.5, a half base, the base is 12, times the height, which is a perpendicular distance each, that should give you the area of the triangle. And so if you, a half times 12 is six, and so H is equal to 46.8 divided by six. And so this will give us the perpendicular distance, 46.8 divided by six, 46.8 divided by six is 7.8. This is 7.8 meters, 7.8 meters. All right, so the perpendicular distance from Q to RS is 7.8 meters. Nice and easy. Now let's look at part B. Part B says a diagram not drawn to scale shows a circle with center O, HJ, and HG are tangents to the circle, and angle JHG is 48 degrees. All right, now let's see what they're gonna ask. 
It says calculate, given the reason for your answer, and go O G O J H. Angle O J H. Now, as you can clearly see, OJ is a radius. OJ is a radius and JH is a tangent. Now, a radius and a tangent are always perpendicular, all right? Radius and tangent are always perpendicular. And so if they're perpendicular, what that means is that the angle is 90. So this angle is 90. And this angle is also 90. That angle is also 90. All right. So what that means then is angle OJH is equal to 90 degrees. Why is it 90? Angles between a tangent and the radius is 90, all right? Because the radius and the tangent are perpendicular to each other. Then you want angle J, angle J O G, J O G. This angle right here. Now to find find this angle right here, as you can see, J O G H forms a quadrilateral. Angles in a quadrilateral sum to 360. So this angle is going to be 360 minus 48 plus 90 plus 90. That looks like 132. So angle JOG equal 132 degrees. All right, why is it 132? Angles in a qua ja lateral sum to 360 degrees and so angle JOG is equal to 360 minus of course 360 minus the 90 plus the 90 plus the 48. That's why it's 132. And it's asking for angle J, K, G. J, K, G. Angle at the same time is twice the size of the angle at the circumference when they're subtended by the same chord or when they're formed in the same arc. And so angle J, K, G is equal to 66 degrees. Why is that? Angle at the center is twice the size, the angle at the circumference. Nice and easy. Then it want angle JLG, angle JL, G. Okay. Opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral sum to 180. As I can see, J, K, G, L forms a cyclic quad. And so if this is 66 and this is 180 minus 66, all right? And 180 minus 66 is 114. So angle J, L, G equal 114 degrees. And that is because opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral sum to 180 degrees. Nice and easy. Soft. <laughs> 